What are the steps to developing and building a character? Yeah, developing character. So that's, I think some people have a easier time with that than others. So I learned this from uh, actually a guest that you had a, on your sh- uh, show, Corey Mandel, like where he, he actually in one of his interviews ironically said that there are generally, as a general rule, two kinds of writers. There are intuitive writers who see characters very clearly in three dimensions and they just bleed on the page and that kind of thing. And then there are more conceptual writers who are very good at the structure part. Uh, personally, I gravitate more towards the intuitive side. So like, and this comes as a director because I, when I'm working with actors, I, I can very quickly pivot into deep backstories and things like that. So for me, how do I create characters? It, it's a little bit of an easier task for me, but there is a process that I generally go through. Um, that starts with me asking like some questions like, what is the one thing my character would never do? Now that's an interesting question to ask about a character, but it can tell you a lot about who they are. So what would my character never do? Well, they would never, I don't know, quit. My never would never quit. Okay. Well, that that automatically, that question can open up a huge, rich story about why wouldn't they ever, what is it about quitting that's so pivotal to their core? Um, you can also ask, and I'll do this, what is one thing they would never say? They may never say, I hate you, or whatever. Uh, now, of course, you know, in the storytelling realm, you would now have to make them do those things. <laughs> now, you know, and of course, what would they never say? They would never say, I hate you. Well, why wouldn't they ever say that? Like, what is it about that word that means so much to them that they would never actually say, I hate you to another person? It's a way of unlocking um, certain kinds of things. So that's usually the first step in, in that. And then coming up with what is your character's major focus, not just as a, as a story, but in their life. What is it that they're aiming for overall? Like for example, I'm working on a pilot right now and I'm doing a lot of work on realizing what is this main character's drive. And this is, he's an interesting one because his drive is to escape his past, right? Because he had a very abusive past and um, and he is pushing and driving and running. He's an ex- adrenaline junkie. He's like pushing the edge all the time, looking for the next thrill. His drive isn't the next thrill. His drive is to escape. So just going through and understanding what that is really also tells you a lot. Um, so that's usually where it begins for me. I'll... I'll do this little checklist. And then what I like to do <laughs> in my perfect designing world, I'll, you know, I, I'm a morning time writer, so I'll get up and do my morning routine. I'll take my little hourglass and I'll flip it upside down. I'll start the hour clock, turn off the phone, and I'll start brain dumping. I really like the process of just like, uh, just furiously letting my keys go on the keyboard or notebook too. It's a different method, but it's sometimes fun to just like explore who they are. What if uh, Izzy is just someone who just never could quite find the right one? Just, just she just tossed and turned her whole life and just start exploring um, the path, as it were, of this character and just digging into their lives and never correcting anything, but just like going down and even as I'm writing, she's someone that I can never five love. No, that doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> she's someone that did find love. She found love early on, but he, you know, he ended up leaving her for someone else. And now she's kind of like, you know what I mean? Like it's this, it's complete immersive exploration into my character. And there's no judgment. There's no wrong stories, uh, wrong choices here. I can actually go back and edit in real time, but I don't erase anything that's on the page. I just put it all down there. There's something very therapeutic and really fun in the play of that. Um, I like to, I will in life um, as I, I could be at the grocery store and I'll hear an interesting conversation 
Um, like here's a perfect example. I was in a sandwich shop one time and I'm ordering a sandwich and the guy's like, so, you know, what, what do you want? I'm like, uh, you know, maybe I'll take the BLT. Okay, cool. What kind of bread do you want? And I'm looking at the, all the breads and it's this really good bakery. It's just very, it's a great sandwich shop. And I'm going, um, well, you got a bunch of different kinds of breads here. I've never, I don't even recognize. What do you recommend? And he goes, oh, all our breads are made right here in the shop. Like you, you, there is no wrong choice. I said, oh, so you're a sandwich agnostic then. And he goes, you know who wasn't an agnostic? And I thought, oh no, oh no, 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 don't say it, don't say it. He goes, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it was so funny to me that he would say it, like he just basically took my joke that I thought was kind of funny and just flushed it down the toilet because clearly this guy's super, super religious. Well, there's a great character for a story, someone who's so religious that they just that it, everything it diffuses the fun out of everything i i have a little note i use a evernote in on my phone and i'll like write that stuff down i'm like oh that's an interesting character or the i used to know another guy who would always whistle and the more stressful things got he would always <whistles> that's such a great little quirk so i will keep track of these things and as i'm exploring what the character can do when it comes to quirks and things Sometimes I'll look through all this list of things and go, oh yeah, this one would really fit. Let me carve this into this person. Um, it's helpful too to like take in the whole person. Like what, how tall are they? How big are they? Um, are, they a, are they a ginger or are they bald? Or are they, you know, like just to really kind of be, have fun with, and, and sometimes that involves like, um, just doing random Google searches or even Instagram, like how you can on Instagram, you can hit the little magnifying glass thing and it'll just pop up this random feed of things. The, you'll, you'll be scrolling through and sometimes you'll see just someone with the most interesting look. They'll have glasses with that are really thick black frames and their hair is a certain way and they have black fingernails. Oh, there's an interesting looking person. So that's a really helpful way. It's just like cataloging all these different people types that are out there and random quirks. That's super helpful when it comes to creating characters. Um, as it goes and as it develops, what I'll need to do is I, I, I really like knowing their inner cores, their inner, what makes them tick. What do they believe? What are they, going back to the, what do they struggle with? Where are they going in life? Um, I like to get more specific about that as I develop them in the story, that kind of thing. But, that's generally the process. I know it's not a one, two, three step, but that's that's usually what I'll do and do with it as I go. Is there a fictional character that, you know, you talked about earlier, that one movie that we all see that if we've come here to LA that we've like, I want it, I should have been part of that and that's what I want to recreate. Is there a character or two where you felt that? Like, that's the character. I don't care Ooh. if I'm playing it or filming it or writing it, that's the character. <laughs> Well, I, I can think of a movie that really hit me, you know, a Close Encounters of the Third Kind was one that really just blew my imagination. Um, the, <laughs> especially the little kid when he's, because I was really little when that movie was out, but the, the little kid who was searching for UFOs, like, boy, I really identified with that, that one. And, and ironically, around the same time was when the first Star Wars came out and Empire... I always saw myself as C-3PO. I, that's such a strange one. Like no one identifies as C-3PO, but because my brother was shorter than me and he was always the annoying little brother, like he was R2-D2 and I was C-3PO. So like they're such unique characters. That's what their they're little um, antagonistic connection very much reminded me of me and my brother. And I, I sort of loved, loved that. Uh, and the idea of, Figuring out how to create that was really, really fun, especially as a kid to think about that. Uh, yeah. Indiana Jones is another one that, uh, he's such a cool character and how do you make that? And that would definitely be one, as a kid, I was definitely like, oh man, I would give anything to be a part of the creation of a process like that, you know? 
the man of adventure and, and ah, so good with the comedic stuff and ah, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. It's just, yeah.